Hello, uh, my name is Andy, I'm with Simplex. Today we're going to be talking about our PowerStar and in particular our uh, Microsoft PowerStars. So when doing preventive maintenance on any of these load banks, you want to first uh, remove power and follow any lockout and takeout procedures that your site may have. Right here, remove all your load connections. And on this side, you want to remove the 120 control power. Uh, from here, you'd be ready to remove all the covers and side panels. Now, uh, we recommend that you do your preventive maintenance six months or 50 hours, whatever comes first. If you're going to be transporting this load bank uh, to different sites or across your own site, make sure that you reduce your preventive maintenance time. Um, you know, if it's one week or six months, uh, we want to make sure that we ensure proper use and tightness of this load bank. Okay, so now that we have our covers removed from the load bank, we're ready to do just a visual inspection. You want to make sure that you're not seeing any loose wires, anything that might pull out here. A good indication if you have a loose wire is that the wire might be slightly browned on the tag or that you might show uh, a little bit more thread on your lug screws. So just give everything a good pull, make sure nothing's loose, nothing's pulling out on you. Next we want to keep moving down this way. Make sure that your wires aren't rubbing against any sharp metals. Now here at Simplex we do use uh, a rub protection on most of our sharp metals to ensure that your insulation doesn't get cut. Still want to give everything a good rub. Uh, next we're going to check our fan rotation on the cooling fans. These are going to be fans that are running all the time if your load bank is plugged in. To make sure your cooling fan or cooling area. Uh, next we want to check our cooling chamber fans. Make sure that we have good rotation. They're spinning the proper way and they're good, good speed on them. Uh, where well, you check this, plug in the load bank, turn on your control power and you'll see the fans spin. Now from this side, we should be able to see if there's any debris caught inside the load bank. Uh, make sure there's no paper, or dust, anything that would cause a fire or, or restrict airflow. Next, let's look at uh, some common uh, unbalanced load problems. If you had any blown fuses, you'd be look at them here. These are all your load fuses. And then we have our contactors. These are all the load contactors on top here. All right. Next step we're going to look through is blown fuses and open resistors. Now, I just have my multimeter here turned to continuity, and we're just going to check make sure we have good continuity across all our fuses and all our fuses seem just fine of course this is a new load bank so they should be fine next now we have our fuses done we're going to check to see if we have any open resistors now the easiest way to do this is that if you have a another coworker that would help you they would be on the opposite side of the load bank and you're going to just go from one resistor to the next to the next, checking to make sure you have correct continuity through the resistor itself. If you have any resistors that show open, make sure you list what resistor number it is so we can get the proper replacement sent out to you. When doing tightness checks of your load bank, be sure to come on each side of your load resistors. You're going to be using a 3 8 nut driver check all these. Now when you're tightening these, make sure that you don't over tighten and spin the resistor on the inside. Go through all of these on both sides. These will be tightened at 20 inch pounds. Again you come back through after, make sure none of them wiggle, none of them move. Next we're going to come on top and talk about the 
load contactors. Um, now these are really ro robust contactors and we want to check to make sure nothing's stuck closed. Now these are nice, they give you an indication right on top. If the tab is up like this, that means they're open. If they're pushed down like that, that means they're closed. So maybe you just want to give them all a good press, make sure nothing sticks, nothing stays closed. And that has a nice, good, strong spring pushing back. Come around this side, we have our load relays. Now these relays offer a uh, manual override. So I'm going to flip one of these here. And as you can see, there's a little window here that shows an orange tab. The tab indicates if the, the relay is closed or open. Right now it's closed and open. So with power removed, we should see all these have an open uh, window on the relay. All these uh, components do have a torque value. The contactors have their torque value listed right on the contactor itself. For instance, these have a lug of 25 inch pounds. These larger ones here are going to be 50 inch pounds. Okay, on your screen you do have a, a couple uh, failures. You have one for tilt or tip. Uh, you do have a fan fail and a, a meter comm failure. So some components you're going to be looking at to identify what the problem is is your tilt sensor right here. Um, if you for some reason do get a tilt sensor and your little bank is upright, um, I would first check to make sure this is good. Uh, if it's not working properly, it's an easy swap out two wires. If you're getting a cooling failure, uh, make sure that you have all four fans running and then come to your current sensing relay. Now this is sensing the current of all four uh, fans. For some reason one fan shuts off or shorts out, this senses too low of a current and lets our PLC know that we're having a fan issue. Now if you're consistently getting a fan failure and you do realize that all of the four fans are running, there's a little set screw here that allows you to adjust the set point down. Right here you have a little flat screwdriver put in there and you turn it clockwise to turn it down and counterclockwise to turn it up. You don't want to rotate this too much. It has a 15 turn revolutions with a 1 to 150 amp range. Other, you do have an intake and exhaust temp alarms. Now if you look on each side, you're going to see these little button uh, thermals. You have two on this side, one on top, and one on the bottom. And you have two on this side, again, one on top, and one on the bottom. Now, uh, when you're doing your maintenance checks and you find a bad component, make sure you write down what the part number is. So right here, we're going to look at this. This is RC1. This is our first contactor. And then we come to our parts legend. And then we find contactor 1. It happens to be right here. Now, when you call into Simplex, we need this part number right here the one three zero one one zero four zero with contactor one it tells us it's a forty amp contactor and here we can check forty amp contactor if you get a meter failure that means you have bad communication from your meter here to your PLC one way you can check this we do have little port indications if you're transmitting or receiving now since this is a short connection this can be blinking very fast uh, if for some reason you're only getting a receive or just getting a transmit, a uh, good indication that you're having some meter problems. We might have to swap out the meter if that seems to be the case, or confirm that your polarity is correct on your wires here. The Microsoft PowerStar load banks are equipped with a 120-240 control power selector switch. This allows you to run the load bank at 240 control power or 120 control power. In 240, we use the transformer to knock it back down to 120 
so we don't overpower the PLC control fans or any other component. These load banks do have a couple fuses on top. See here we have three meter fuses, phases A, B, and C, and we have three control fuses. The first two are going to be before our transformer. The second one is going to be a two amp after our transformer. And last thing we're going to talk about cleaning up. So after we've gone through, checked all our components, went through tightness, we're going to talk about just cleaning. Uh, we want to make sure there's no metal shavings or debris in here. I'm just going to use a light brush, nothing too hard. Just go through it and brush any dirt or debris you may see on here. Uh, make sure there's no dust. Make sure it's looking nice and clean. Uh, then after you're done brushing this, you can go through the vacuum cleaner and make sure you clean up any dust and debris. Now it's important that you don't use any high pressure compressed air. Since we do have a PLC in here and a meter, any high compressed air could damage the electronics inside. And continue down the sides. If you want to use a larger brush for the sides, that's just fine. Make sure you get all that dust off. You come back with a vacuum cleaner and clean it up. All right, let's go over some troubleshooting problems you might run into. We go to our manual screen. You can see I have a bunch of steps on right now. Now if we go to our metering screen, we're at 415 volts AC. You see our current, our KW, and this is a calculated KW from the value steps I have on. Now as you can see that phase A is a little lower than B and C, indicating that I have an out resistor, a blown fuse, or a bad contactor. So from here we're going to go back to our load screen and we're going to turn on one step at a time. Alright, after going through and turn on each step individually, I came to my first 10 kilowatt step. I went back to my metering screen and found that I have no current on phase A, but B and C look just fine. You can also see that my KW off the meter is lower than my applied KW calculated from the 10 kW step that's on. So from here we're going to start removing covers on the load bank and try and figure out what's causing this issue. Again this is on our first 10 kilowatt step. Okay, here I went to our drawings where we're showing our load resistors and load fuses. Now here you can see this is our first 10 kilowatt step, you can see it's step 5. We're going to be looking at fuse 2 through 5. Resistor contactor number 5 and resistors LR13, LR14, and LR15. Now that we have our covers removed and our power off, we can start with checking our fuses. Here we see that RF4 has no continuity through the fuse. Again, looks like fuse number four is blown. What we're going to do now is replace the fuse, put the covers back on and reapply power to see if that resolves the issue. Alright, back at the screen. We're going to turn on our master load and our 10 kilowatt step that we were having issues with before. It's on. Now we go to our metering screen. Now here we can see that all three phases of current match. All even balance load. Our KW off the meter matches our applied KW calculated from the load steps that are on. Looks like in this case the blown fuse was the issue. From this point we are ready to continue testing with normal operation. 
All right, so now we've gone through any preventive maintenance uh, with your Power Star load bank. Now, uh, if you do find any bad components, uh, make sure you lock out your machine, don't use it anymore, inform your employer, and get in contact with Simplex so we can get the new parts out to you as soon as possible. Uh, if you have any problems with these load banks, feel free to call our service department for any questions.